Uh, let's do something a little on the um, cultural side here for a moment. Um, I have a tweet here. I'm not sure if you can see it or not. But um, uh, this was January 25th. Uh, Vice President, former Vice President Joe Biden Let's be clear, transgender equality is the civil rights issue of our time. There is no room for compromise when it comes to basic human rights. Uh, sometimes I, I just, I wonder what has happened to my country, to my culture, to my world. Um, everybody knows that and you, if, if you're thinking I'm picking on Joe Biden, um, just realize there is no one on the left that would for a moment dispute what he said. That would be political suicide. Um, so Mayor Pete could have said this. Elizabeth Warren could have said this. Uh, I don't even know who else is running anymore. Uh, could have said the exact same thing. Now, the one thing with Joe Biden is he's been in Washington forever. And you know that 20 years ago, he didn't even know what a transgender person was. Let alone did he think it was a basic human right. And in fact, nobody, almost nobody 10 years ago would have even been able to understand this. But now it is the new orthodoxy. And when a cultural, when a culture's cultural orthodoxy can be defined in a single decade in direct opposition to everything that has been considered settled reality and belief uh, up until that point in time um, in that society. You have a revolution going on, and it is a revolution of such speed and magnitude. The worldview that lies behind this statement is a very dangerous worldview. Basic human rights were defined in this nation on the basis of a creator. That mankind has certain inalienable rights, but they are mankind's inalienable rights because mankind was created by God. And that therefore these inalienable rights originate in what is truly good for everyone. Once you adopt the idea that human rights find their origination either in mankind, in some autonomous choice where I, I choose, I simply decide in my mind that I am a two-spirit questioning mighty wind. And when the rest of the world has to go, oh, okay, so what pronouns would you like? Because what pronouns do you use for mighty wind, you know? I want... Um... <laughs> There are some other mighty wins we could come up with along those lines. I mean, seriously. It, it, uh, but the rest of us all of a sudden have to bow down because you have the autonomous right to determine um, who you are and how all the rest of us are interact, to interact with you. That worldview either places it there in the individual, which leads to absolute anarchy. Intersectionality leads to anarchy because... You're always looking for more intersectional authority and power. And so you're going to be constantly looking for this kind of, of I'm different than you in this way. And that leads to anarchy. So when, when the anarchy shuts everything down and there can no longer be a cultural, a culture at peace with itself, then the totalitarians step in. And they provide the rescue 
uh, from the destruction of the cultural fabric that critical theory is designed to create. But it will not be a rescue that has um, liberty, freedom, uh, that has any meaningful ground for human rights. Because once human rights are derived from the government, we know as Christians that the government is simply a concentration of sinners. There, it's a concentration of sinners, uh, which is why uh, the men who founded this country, not all of whom were Christians by any stretch of the imagination, but many were, and those who were not lived in a culture where Christianity was normative, um, divided power. And they divided it out so that you would not have uh, this very kind of, of situation. We, I continue to, and we will continue the rest of this year, to have the constant conversation because the evangelical elites have determined um, that they are going to demand that Christians support the idea of their own illegalization to do the right thing. So what you do is you abandon any kind type of biblical theology or understanding of nationhood, borders, law, uh, taxation, um, you reject all of that, and you create a crisis, and what you do is you say, if you're really going to be a Christian who follows biblical teaching, then you're going to agree with the people who at least want to do something about migrants. And what they're going to do in the process is say, and please ignore the fact that those people who talk about that, likewise, are going to demand your children from you. They're going to demand your children from you. Uh, they are going to shut down homeschooling. And they are going to demand that your children spend the majority of their day being instructed in government schools. And what are they going to be instructed about? Well, they're going to be instructed there's no male or female. They're going to be instructed there is no God, that there is no transcendent source of values, that you are a human accident, that homosexuality is the greatest thing that mankind has ever come up with, and that marriage is not between a man and a woman, but between two men, three men, 10 men, 47 men, five dogs, and 14 dolphins. It does not matter as long as you call it marriage. And they're going to be told... All of those things, each day, every day, by the government, which will then shut down anyone who protests, shut, shut down any church that would say Jesus is Lord rather than Caesar is Lord. But you've got to vote for these people. You've got to vote for that worldview because of the poor that Jesus said will always be with you. And that the church is supposed to be dealing with, not socialism. But you still have to do it to be a good Christian. And that's what you're going to hear. And you're going to hear it over and over and over again. It's going to be a drumbeat. And I don't know how to look someone in the eye more plainly and simply say, would you please wake up? Can you not see what you're doing? I know that we live in a fallen world. And I know that there is no such thing as a perfect candidate. And I wish that there were wonderful choices. I, I didn't feel I had a choice last time. This time around, we are dealing with open, plain socialists who have made it clear that one of the first things they'll do is they will, they will pass that Equality Act, which will simply shut down almost all of us who are seeking to promote godliness in this culture. I, 
And every single one of you sitting there going, well, but, you know, it can't be a one-issue voter. This is not a one-issue voting situation. This is a socialist, anti-Christian worldview versus something else. At least it's something else. I'm not saying it's great. I'm not, I'm not saying the Apostle Paul's running for office. He's not. But if you can't see... If you if if listening to Joe Biden, creepy Joe, <laughs> you know, I, mean, I don't, look when he was vice president, I thought it was so weird. Back then, how he touched females constantly, but nobody said a word about it back then. It was before the Me Too, so I guess nobody cared. But you and I both know that Joe Biden in the 1980s, didn't even know what a transgender person was. And now it is the civil rights issue of our time. I really wonder, my black brothers and sisters who are sitting here going, yeah, we, we've got to, we've got to, we got to vote for these people. Civil rights issue, transgenderism, drag queens. This is, this is, this is the civil rights issue of our time. What worldview is behind that? How do you even begin to defend that? How can you not see the radical nature? I don't know. But please notice his words. There is no room for compromise. On transgenderism. On transgenderism. The greatest example of moral and ethical insanity that I have ever encountered in my adult life. And according to one of the primary and every single other socialist candidate would agree with him on this. No compromise. No comp. There's no room. If you, if you do not agree with this, there is no room for you in this nation any longer. Vote him in. Hey, that's the right thing to do. Okay, I, I don't. I, at, at times, I'm just left going. How obvious does it have to become? I mean, once we're both sitting in the same gulag, maybe you'll go. You know, you might have had a point back then, but by then it'll be a little late. It'll be just a little bit late. Yeah, folks, I'm going to tell you. Um, now, don't get me wrong. I've said it before. That worldview cannot last. That worldview cannot create a culture. That's why it collapses. And when it collapses, the totalitarians take over. The totalitarians, we all know what they did in the Soviet Union. We know what they're doing in China. We know what they're doing in North, uh, North Korea. And those nations eventually fall. But it can be slow and bring a tremendous amount of death.